All right, Alpha Males, saddle up for another episode of the Alpha Male Podcast. The podcast where we talk about being a man, a real man, made in the image of God. God is number one. I hope to recognize that and keep him at the center of my life and everything that I do. This podcast is no different, and I don't apologize for that. Today's episode may not be popular. It may tick a lot of people off, but that's okay. I think it's a truth that needs to be spoken, so I'm going to speak it. It's about looking at food a different way. I'll plug in the bio, and then we'll get into the topic. If you want to skip it, skip around 3 minutes and 45 seconds. On most platforms that I'm aware of, that's about 7 fast-forward clicks. And then we'll get to the topic. Who am I? A question we should all ask ourselves. I am, first and foremost, a servant of God made in his very own image, a follower of Jesus Christ, a simple man called by God to the Great Commission to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Next, a little bit about my background and what God has allowed me to do and blessed me to do in life. Grew up what most would consider very poor in the backwoods of the southeastern and mid-Atlantic United States. Hunting and fishing. Joined the Marine Corps at 17. Did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. So a decorated Marine Corps combat veteran. Infantry assaultman. After the combat tours, I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps under Mojave Viper. I also served in the U.S. Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. Also a veteran of law enforcement. I served with LAPD. I was a sworn peace officer, a cop for LAPD. I worked regular patrol assignments and more specialized assignments. One of those more specialized assignments was warrant service, fugitive recovery. Also had some other law enforcement roles. I am an FBI certified firearms instructor and been certified by another three-letter government agency in a lot of firearms and training things. I've also been a private contractor, worked in the private sector, pertaining to tactics and gunfighting and protecting America from enemies foreign and domestic. I served as the commander of a tactical team to stop active shooters in a large metropolitan area. That was our primary mission, to stop active shooters, which sadly are a thing in America today. I've also been blessed to do quite a bit of competition shooting. Started my first formal competitions even before joining the Marine Corps at 17. I had one more shooting competitions than I can remember. I have competed in all manner of disciplines in shooting, I've been blessed to be a state rifle and pistol champion, West Coast regional champion. Like I said, been blessed to win more shooting competitions than I can remember. I mentioned hunting. I've hunted to put meat on the table starting when I was a child. I've also been a professional big game hunter and guide, hunting and slaying all manner of beast. And I don't apologize for that. Humbled to be the host of three podcasts. Simple Man Sermons, Alpha Male Podcast, and Gumfighter Life. Obviously, as things not mentioned, I've been blessed to do many other things. But, again, first and foremost, I'm a servant. A servant of God, a believer and follower of the Bible, the Word, Jesus Christ. And I don't apologize for that. With that, Let's transition into today's topic. So let's talk about 
looking at food a different way. Now, why are we talking about this? Well, because, number one, I have the people that I really love in my life that are quite a bit overweight. I mean, quite a bit overweight. And looking around America, when I go to the city, when I go around other people, it's pretty evident that it's an epidemic. And so that's why we're talking about it. And the reason I believe it's an epidemic is throughout most of human history, let me step back. If you ever see a problem, instead of just listening to whatever narrative there is, try and step back. God gave you a brain and reason. Try and step back and figure out for yourself why is this thing the way that it is? Well, here's what I believe. Through most of human history, we haven't had this giant surplus where it is so easy to get calories. This is not unheard of in, in human history. I mean, in the Roman times, you hear about the bread and circuses. They would hand out bread. So people weren't necessarily starving. And they probably had a surplus of calories if they had wanted to get more food than they needed. But through a lot of human history, we wanted to get the food that was available and consume it. Because I'd say up until recently, far more people died of starvation than obesity. But in the Western world, in America, and Western Europe, and probably some other places, this really isn't the case now. So I think that's one of the big reasons why things are the way that they are, is that for much of our history here as a people, we've lived in an environment where food was something to get when you could get it because you were more likely to die of starvation, again, than obesity. But that's not the case anymore. Thankfully, we can adjust to that because God made us. He made us flexible. He made us the most adaptable. The, you know, the most adaptable, most critically thinking species there's nothing else like humans. We can adapt, we can achieve, we can overcome. And we're blessed to be able to do that. And I'd say that is probably the main reason we face this problem right now. Some other reasons are marketing. It's in some interest to have you buy as much food as you can to make you want to eat this thing or that thing and then perhaps even to sell you drugs to keep you alive longer to keep eating those things. We're on an economy that's kind of based on consumerism. I'm not going to go deep down that rabbit hole. That's a whole different problem. You know, thou shalt not covet and greed and covetousness and gluttony. Those are different things. I'm talking about this core issue. So let's not get too far off into that. Things also are engineered, literally engineered. There is millions probably and millions of dollars into getting food that makes you crave it, makes you want it, make you want to eat more of it. Again, it's a, it's a side issue. You are better than that. This is the Alpha Male Podcast. You're better than that. You can adjust to that. Now, I may not make many friends in this episode. But that's okay. I love you guys and I want what's best for you. And sometimes the best thing is not the easy thing. Oftentimes, the best thing is not the easy thing. The best road often is the hardest road. Now, I'm not going to offer you some pill that you can take or some new crazy wonder food found in the Amazon where you can take it and eat like garbage and have a six-pack. 
I, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to tell you the truth. And the truth is, if you want to be an alpha male, stop making excuses. However they design and engineer food, however much they try and push food on you or get you to eat it, take personal responsibility. You are the one eating the food. So if you are taking in more calories than you are expending, there's only one person to blame. Unless somebody sits you down and puts a gun to your head and says, eat this or I will blow your brains out, it is your fault. Shy of that, it is your doing. You are doing it to yourself. You are destroying your own health and the temple you are given, the body you are given. You are destroying it. Nobody else is making you eat that food. It's your fault. Take personal responsibility. Again, I said I wasn't going to make any friends in this episode. And I told you before I started about this, it's not going to be easy. But nobody is making you eat that food. Just because they make Oreos taste really good doesn't mean you have to eat them. I can't remember the last time I had an Oreo. In fact, I joined the Marine Corps in 2001. I forget exactly when I went to boot camp, but I remember even then they gave us Oreos in our little packed lunches in boot camp. Guess what I did? I gave them away. That's not food. That's a food-like substance engineered in a lab to get you to eat it. Even then, I lost a ton of weight in boot camp, and I was skinny when I went in. But that's not food. Nobody makes you eat it. I was so hungry. I looked like a malnourished white Somalian when I got out of boot camp. I was skinny. Still, that's, that, that's garbage. It's not food. Nobody makes you eat it. You willingly are destroying yourself if you're doing that. It's your responsibility. Even in portions. If you decide you want to have an Oreo, you know, okay, that, that's on you. But just because it comes in a giant bag does not mean you have to eat said giant bag of Oreos. You know, just because chips come in a certain size bag does not mean that you have to eat the whole bag of chips. You can have a chip. Bet you can't have just one. You remember that campaign slogan? What a horrible thing that is. If you're an alpha male, you ought to decide how much and what you eat. Not you can't control yourself. That's garbage. That's not being a man. That's not being an alpha male. Whatever you decide to eat, it may manifest itself in the body. But you must first make up your mind as a man as to what you are going to eat or not going to eat. You must decide that for yourself. You must decide what you are going to eat or not eat. It may manifest itself around your waistline, but it starts somewhere else. You have to decide that you're going to eat that first and then you eat it. Now let's talk about another problem in this arena. And that is trying to make food fill a role it's not supposed to fill. If you have some kind of sadness, dare even say depression, some sort of hole in your soul, the place to go for filling that is not food, it is God. If you have some kind of emptiness in your life, You're not going to fill it with food. You fill that with God. If you're missing some kind of meaning in life, go to God for what that is, not food. You don't go to food to fix some kind of emotional problem. This is the Alpha Male Podcast. Rule over your emotions. You rule over them or they will rule over you. Rule over them. Don't give in to them. If you're eating for some kind of emotional thing, you got to dominate that like a man, like an alpha male. Don't give in to it. Don't eat to fix an emotional problem. Don't eat for some kind of emptiness in your soul. What kind of garbage is that? We call it soul food. Soul food is your Bible. That's soul food. And all this... I don't even... I'll tell you... Here's an example. We were going... uh, 
right now I'm driving back from the airport. It's literally almost an entire day to get to the airport and back from where I live by choice, kind of living out in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, I haven't had TV in a long, long time. When I met my wife, she didn't have TV. My sister likes, I guess, entertainment, like most people do. She wanted to listen to the radio on our, whatever it is, several hour commute. She turned on the radio and the song Poker Face came on. And I told her that was the first time I had ever heard that song. I had seen references to it. I heard people talk about it. But I ever, never actually heard the song Poker Face. And she said it was something like 13 years old. You know what? I could have went another 13 years or 130 years and never heard the song Poker Face. And I would have been just fine. Much like these TV cooking shows, don't elevate food to a place it doesn't belong. It's just food. Food is important to survive. Yes, you need food to live, to sustain in this body. God gave his people manna from heaven. He also warned them about gluttony and greed. When they gathered too much, what happened? It went rancid. It went bad. They were supposed to gather what they needed. Likewise, you with your food, take what you need. Don't elevate food to a position where it doesn't belong. All these... I don't even know. I don't know that I've ever seen any of these shows. But elevating food to a place where it doesn't belong. There's some giant thing about how nice a cake can be. Who cares? You probably shouldn't be eating cake anyway. Like, that's what I'm saying. If you think that's going to give you a better life, no. Your life should be consisting of so much more richness than rich food. Now, I'm not saying that you can't enjoy food. Food is a great blessing. You should enjoy it. And you should especially be thankful for it. But don't put it in a position where it doesn't belong. I'd submit that anything can become an idol. Even food. Don't idolize a cake. Don't idolize a dish. Don't idolize a chef. You were made for more than that. You were made for more. And this transcends more than just food. That just happens to be the topic that we're talking about today. But you were made for more. Your life should be built on more. You should get more meaning out of life than how nice a cake can be or what kind of drama is on TV or or how nice your dinner is. Well, let's talk about briefly about going out to eat. And I almost never go out to eat, but I'll concede that there is probably a place to go out to eat. It is nice. It is a great blessing to be able to go out with your family, to be able to go out with friends you haven't seen in a long time and go out and have a meal. It's not really my thing. One of the things I really love about my wife, which I cautioned her against, but... uh, we went ahead and did it anyway. Uh, when I first asked her for our first date, I asked where she would like to go out to eat because that's a customary thing to do. And she asked if instead I would cook her dinner, make her dinner. And I, I like to cook. I, I like to do that kind of thing. And I would much rather do that than go out to eat. That was one of the first things I really remember about my wife making her unique. And I really like that. I cautioned her against that because because uh, she's a woman. And to be fair, I don't know that it's safe to go out with a man you don't know that well. Now, to be fair, I had, at the time, a fairly prestigious job that you would need a pretty legit background check and everything to get through. So I think she felt pretty safe that I was on the up and up and not, you know, some kind of crazy serial killer or something. It, it was a, it was a kind of job that you wouldn't have if... Anyway, let's not get too far down that rabbit hole. But she said that she wanted to have a dinner at home, a meal at home which I offered to cook. I like to cook. You may think from this episode I hate food, but I don't. I like to cook, and I'm blessed with the talent of cooking. Everything that I have, God gave me, and he blessed me with that talent as well. Most people that eat my cooking say I'm a very good cook. I don't cook with recipes or anything like that. I just cook. But how does this tie into going out to eat? I cook for what is healthy and what is needed and what also tastes good. But I think most places, and I'm not saying this is bad, they're cooking to fill you up with the least amount of money they can put into it for the most amount of return. I mean, that's business. And that's fine. But if you look at the nutritional value of 
I don't know what's I, a happy meal comes to mind, but for an adult, what's an adult happy meal? Uh, whatever combo at McDonald's. That is to fill you with calories. That is not per se to make you a healthy, well-adjusted human. That's not their goal. And again, there's no excuses. Don't blame it on McDonald's. Nobody's putting a gun to your head and making you eat McDonald's. But going out to eat, there's a time and a place for it. You know, if you were on a long road trip and you've only been eating, you know, I advise you to bring snacks and stuff like that. But let's say you've been on a road trip for days and you want an actual meal. And you just need a break um, and you want a nice sit-down meal and you could use the calories. I'm not saying there's never a time and a place for it or like you're mostly doing it for fellowship and somebody else really, really wants to go out to a certain restaurant because they really like it. I'm not saying there's not a time and a place for it, but I'm saying that almost should never be your default. Like, what are we doing tonight? We're going to in and out Wrong answer. Like, that should not be a thing that you do all the time. Their goal in life is not to make you healthy and happy and well-adjusted in a well-balanced diet. Their goal is to fill you up and to get you to spend money there by making it taste good for the least amount of money they can put into it. That's pretty much the goal. And they shouldn't have to apologize for that. They're in business. Again, nobody's making you eat that stuff. But when you go out to eat, really think about that. Really think about their goals versus your goals and if they align or not. And again, there's a time to go out for a nice, fancy meal, I think. Uh, There's nothing wrong with that. But just like my wife, there's wisdom at. Maybe invite them over and cook for them or, or something like that. Something better. Now let's talk about junk food. Junk food has been a term for a long time. And I told you that story in the beginning about Marine Corps boot camp. But I was skinny going in. And I lost a lot of weight, like a a crazy, I was not healthy when I got out of boot camp. I was skinny when I went in, and because I didn't want to eat the garbage they gave me, I think it was more healthy to lose more weight than to eat that garbage. I'm not saying there's never a time, just like, you can't say there's never a time for heroin. Heroin is horrible. 99.9% of the time, you should not touch it in any amount. But let's say, we think of heroin as a street drug, but it's actually a brand name like Bear Aspirin. Heroin is a brand name for a prescription drug. If you're getting your leg cut off and you're getting an operation so that you don't flop around in pain on the table and increase your chances of dying to get you through a very short-term time, that might be the right answer. Heroin at some point might be the right answer. Almost never. 99% of the time, it's the wrong answer. I would say the same goes for Oreos, Twinkies, all that kind of stuff. It's called junk food, I think legitimately. It's like one step above poison. If you're starving to death, then eat it. If you're not starving to death, your body is meant to go through times without food. That's what body fat is for, and it's meant to go through times where it burns body fat. You don't need to eat that food unless you are legitimately like starving, dying, or you're diabetic. You know, those are times when you probably, it's better to eat that food than not eat it, but almost always the right answer is to just wait and get something better, more nutritious. So let's start looking at food a different way. Look at what that food is doing for you or doing to you. Is it beneficial to eat that food? Again, nobody's making you eat it unless somebody literally has a gun to your head making you eat something. You're putting it in your body. No excuses. I don't care how shiny the bag is. I don't care how good it looks on a menu. I don't care that it's the next new trendy thing. Analyze it. Analyze what it is and what it isn't and if you should be putting it in your body or not. That's the way. Look at food. Don't let somebody else decide what your portion should be. Just because you go to a restaurant and order a giant meal doesn't mean you have to shovel it down your gullet like a swine. You're not a swine. You can choose what portion you want to eat. You have willpower. Be an alpha male and decide, you know what, I've had enough, I'm satisfied. I don't need to shovel all of this in my mouth. Again, look at food a different way. I hate to look around at people that I love and and nobody knows the future. Like, yeah, I might have a six pack, but I could get hit by a gravel truck. And if that's God's will, I'm ready to go home anytime tomorrow. And those people could outlive me. But it seems like a lot of people are eating themselves into an early grave. 
robbing themselves of not just the longevity of life, the longevity of life, but robbing themselves of joy in life and functionality in life. There's a lot of people that I love to do stuff with, and we used to love to do all kinds of stuff, but literally I can't do it with them because they're not healthy enough to do it. Like to climb up a hill, or to crawl under underbrush, or things like that, just simple basic human stuff. They can't do it because they're so out of shape. And I have to wonder what their quality of life is day to day because they have a hard time doing those kind of tasks. How much life are they missing out on? How much do they opt out of because they're in such bad shape they won't enjoy doing it when they would really enjoy doing it if they weren't so overweight? And again, for much of human history, we live in a world where more people died of starvation than a surplus of calories. But at least for now, unless inflation gets really bad and the things prophesied in the Bible come to pass in our lifetime, we live in a world of excess calories. But you, as an alpha male, should be able to rule over that and adjust to it and, by the strength and willpower given to you, live in any world that God chooses you to live in. I like history. You may think, what does this have to do with food? Well, I like history and I like thinking about history. But if you think about living in different times and different places, as cool as that seems, God doesn't make mistakes. As the Bible says, he needed you together in your mother's womb. He knew when you were going to live. He knew where you were going to live. And he put you here now. And God doesn't make mistakes. If he had wanted you to be born in the 1700s or you know, the Ice Age, he would have put you there. He put you here now. And you're to adjust and live best and abundant life in the world that he created you in right now. So adjust to the world that he put you in now and live your best life, as the young kids say. Live your best life in the world that you are in now, in the place and time that you are in now. Rule over it. Have dominion over it. God created us different than all other beasts of the field and birds of the air. He created us in his own image, and he created us to have dominion. Have dominion. At least have dominion over your own gut and your own stomach. Rule over it, and don't let it rule over you. I'll close with this. You might think this is easy for me to say. And I have been in, I would consider, good shape and great shape by God's grace. Not because I'm anything special. Whatever willpower I have, God gave it to me. But I wasn't always. I was at one time fat. I was a fat kid growing up in the South, you know, where everything's fried in butter and, you know, your your loved ones, as much as it's not good, they tell you to eat, you need to eat, you're too skinny even when you're fat. If you grew up in the South, you might know what I'm talking about. But I got into high school, you know, and they say a verse that a brother shared with me on our Patreon chat. You know, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I acted like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man... I put away childish things, childish ways. So, when I started to become a man early in high school, this would have been 99, 2000, I guess was the last time I was fat. I looked around and I realized I was fat. I was a, like, I'm not talking a little chubby. Like, I was, I was unhealthily obese fat. I was a fat kid. And I decided, by God's grace, I didn't want to be fat anymore. And I'm not going to give you a bunch of advice on what I did at the time because a lot of it was really unhealthy. And the advice we got back in the day in like health class, I think was really unhealthy. I'm not going to tell you what I did, but I understood one fundamental simple fact. That if you don't eat, you will lose weight. And I did not eat. And I lost a lot of weight. Something like 60 pounds, I think, between freshman and sophomore year. So I do know how hard it is. I do know that it sucks. I do know what it's like to be fat. That was that was well over 20 years ago. And I have, like I said, by God's grace, I'm in great shape still today. I'm in better shape today than I was in high school. By God's grace. I just went on a run in boots by God's grace. Because I was on a long, long road trip today. Still am. And I didn't want to miss a workout. I give God all the credit for the willpower. I would not have anything if he didn't give it to me. And willpower is one of those things. 
and I consider everything in life a blessing, and willpower is no different. But as the Bible says, ask and you will receive. Rise up. Rise above it. Have dominion. Rule over it. It's not like this is coming from somebody that doesn't know. I know. I know that it can suck. It's okay. You can be hungry. You won't die. Unless you get to the point where you haven't eaten in so long, you actually will die. But I have a hard time believing that that would happen today in America. Unless that was your actual goal was to starve to death. I know that it can be difficult. That may have been 20 some years ago, but I can still remember it. But again, nobody put a gun to your head. If you got yourself into it, you can get yourself out of it. If you're still breathing, if you're still drawing breath, God willing, you can get out of it and you can be at a healthy weight. How do you determine what that is? Well, I don't think the army does everything best, but a big misconception is like the army's looking for like star athletes and everybody thinks about the military, they think about Navy SEALs or or stuff like that. But the army doesn't really need athletes for most jobs. It needs healthy enough people to live a good functional life while they're in the army. So I would say look at the army height and weight standards. They're not super strict in my opinion. Even their physical fitness test is not super strict. Can you at least pass that? You at least meet the army height and weight standards. That's, I'd say a good benchmark. Now, if you're super ripped and super muscly, then, you know, you might fall outside of that for good reasons. But other than that, I'd say at least give it a look if you're wondering what you should be or what's a functional, good, healthy weight. I'd say that's a good benchmark. They have a real simple height, weight index and a taping thing. If you fall outside of that, you can look that up easily enough. Again, I know this episode might not be super popular. People might not like it, but they may need to hear it. And you may need to hear it, or somebody you love may need to hear it. And sometimes, as the Bible says, no prophet has honor in his own country. It might be less offensive if you share this with them than if you try and tell them. So maybe this is not even for you. Maybe it's for somebody you love. But I hope that you see the value in this, and I... I feel as an alpha male, even though it might not get me a bunch of patrons, that it's a truth that needs to be told, and I hope that it's helpful. I guess that's it. I hope that it's helpful to someone out there. If you like this episode and you want to pair it well, there's one of the, I consider, quintessential episodes of the Alpha Male Podcast, Working Out Made Easy. You can check that out. Tactical tip of the day, 100% cocoa, real chocolate, not that milk chocolate, not even dark chocolate. You think dark chocolate, that's probably 50%, 60% cocoa, cocoa, which means it's probably 40% garbage. Get 100% chocolate. Don't expect a sweet treat, don't expect a dessert, but if you like the taste of chocolate and you want something healthy, with quite a bit of fiber and fat without all the extra garbage in it, 100% cocoa chocolate. You'll almost certainly find it in a baking section. You won't find it probably at all in a like chocolate section. That is your tactical tip of the day. Tactical verse of the day we actually already talked about. And this is, again, from a very good patron that has done a lot for the show. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. Thanks for listening, men. Have a blessed day.